Welcome to Elliot's PT Podcast. I'm here to help you find your balance and live your best life guilt-free. I don't believe there is a one-size-fits-all approach for health and fitness. We're all different and we need to find out what works for us. I'm passionate about helping people make realistic, long-term lifestyle changes that they will stick to and they will take with them forever. I don't believe in crazy diets or short-term fixes. We all need to live and find a perfect balance in diet and exercise that suits our individual needs. I want to help you find your exercise mojo, feel great and achieve wonderful things. Here is Elliot's PT Podcast by Renee Elliott. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Elliot's PT Podcast. So I wanted to come on today and I wanted to give you a bit of an insight into who I am. So because we have a six week transformational program beginning in a couple of weeks on the 29th of May. Some people that maybe don't know me that well, they might be thinking, who are you? Do you think that you might know what, you know, that you might be no more than us? Or who are you to have think that you could understand more about weight loss because you've never been overweight? So I wanted to explain to you some of the things that I've been through and how I've got to where I am today. I've been a trainer for probably 12 or so years now and I have seen lots and lots of people, I've trained thousands and thousands of people, but I've seen lots of people that have um, they've joined programs and they join them and they do them for a short amount of time and then they, after the program ends, they change, they, they stop doing following, I guess, the guidelines and they go, oh, okay, thank God this is over. I've been restricting for this many weeks. I can't wait to go out and eat a meal out or I can't wait to drink some wine or drink some alcohol, you know, whatever. And they, they want to go out and get, because they're now not on the program. So that's the thing I hate. I absolutely hate that because I don't want you to be restricting yourself for six weeks. I want you to find something that you can live with and stick to for life. (laughs) And that when you can find that you can stick to that for life, there's none of this yo-yo effect. And that's what I probably find is uh, lots of people struggle with because they may have done things before and they will say, well, it didn't work. You know, and uh, the the reason it didn't work and, and people then think it's a problem with them. It's not a problem with you at all. It's the diet. <laughs> it's because the diet's too restrictive. It's not realistic. It doesn't suit your lifestyle. So that's why it doesn't work. It is not you. You are not the problem. So uh, yeah, so that's definitely what I, I'm all about, helping you find that balance. So how have I found that balance? So I am lucky enough that I was brought up in a household where uh, we didn't really talk about weight. It wasn't something that, I I hear lots of people say that their mums always spoke about, you know, dieting and being thin. It wasn't something, it wasn't something that we were, you know, we were, I was never, taught to be restrictive or any of that food. I was I was more taught about eating food that that I enjoyed and you know fueling my body. I was more taught about that stuff. So uh, it was only a couple of years ago it was the first time when I actually interviewed my mum that we talked about diet because we just it just wasn't something that was in my house. So I I am lucky, I'm very lucky that I have I was brought up with a healthy uh, image around food and exercise and all of that stuff. It was always something that was part of my life. As I have got older, I, um, you know, when I was in my 20s, so I, I didn't have a, uh, I lived off pasta. I lived off pasta. And when I first went overseas, I went overseas, I was partying a lot, and uh, which was great. And I came home and I had put on all this weight and uh, I went overseas for first for six months. When I was seized and I came home and I put this weight and I remember I worked in a, I lived in a small town and in a small town people knew me, you know, and they, uh, everybody knew each other. And when I came home, people said to me, I remember this one man from the pub that I used to work in, he said to me, he's like, you've got that full English belly on you. And I did, I had weight all just around my stomach because I've been drinking and, you know, partying for six months. And I had one skirt that fitted me and he had one skirt that I could fit into and I was 20, I was in my early 20s, and I was like, okay, uh, I know that I am, you know, so I looked at my exercise, I looked at my food, I wasn't a trainer at this point, so I looked at that, and I um, I refused to buy any clothes, so I just wore this one skirt until I, um, 
un until I, you know, got back to the size I wanted to be at. So I probably had about two odd dress sizes. So that was, I guess, the first, you know, so that's one example of how, you know, but but I've never, I've never uh, been, never done anything really restrictive. Well, I think I did once actually. I'll get onto that. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then I went back and I lived overseas. So when I went back overseas, I made sure that I joined a gym. So when I was first over there, I didn't think I could afford joining a gym. But when I back, when I went back the second time, I um, I didn't want the same thing to happen as what it did the first time. And when I went back overseas the second time, I'd sold everything back in my home. And so I'd, I'd sold my car, got rid of my flat, got rid of all my furniture. So so I knew I was going to be there for, uh, I wanted to be there longer. So I made sure I joined a gym and um, I made that a priority to fit exercise in. The people that I, I live with my family, but they didn't go to the gym. So that wasn't really their thing, but I made it a priority to make sure that I was uh, still exercising because because I knew that how easy it was for me to put weight on and I didn't want to do the same as what I did and I was still wanting to party and enjoy myself so I made it work I made it work for me that way uh, I lived overseas for five or six years and then we moved back here so me and my husband now moved back here I met my husband overseas and I was able to you know I was able to you know I made the gym a priority and I actually started my fitness training while I was overseas and all of that as an instructor. Anyway, so I came back over here. You know, I remember wanting to lose a little bit of weight. So I actually did. So this is what I'm saying. It's probably the only restrictive thing I did. So I remember seeing in a magazine or seeing something that was like, or reading, seeing on the TV or whatever, something like that, seeing about people doing the shake diet. So I thought I'd do that. So I tried that and um, <laughs> I tried it. And so I tried to do the two meal replacements and only have one meal with the shakes. In the end, it was, um, I, I can't remember how long I did it for, but I ended up um, so constipated. I couldn't, I couldn't go to the toilet and then I ended up bleeding from the bowels because I was pushing so hard because I couldn't go to the toilet. So it was horrible. And um, it was so stupid because you, you just, that stuff doesn't work, you know? And I don't, I think after however long, I had those problems, but however long I did it for, I didn't end up losing any weight anyway. So it was stupid. And uh, lack of knowledge. <laughs> so total lack of knowledge there. But what I see, all of these little things that you that I've done through the years, you know, and like I said, I like I haven't spent a long time, a lot of time dieting because I wasn't brought up that way. It, everything's a learning lesson, so everything teaches you a little bit something, and you take that with you, and you take on to the next, to your keep moving it forward. And this is something that I spent a lot of time uh, during the program um, teaching people about. That don't see all these things as failures. They are something you learn from. Now, I learned from that lesson that I will never, ever, that's the first time I've ever, I guess, done a bit of a restriction in food. Never, ever will I do that. It is just not for me. Um, and it's not, never works. It never works. And I learned that back then a long time ago. <laughs> you know, because that was when we first moved back. Then I was getting married, and I was getting married, and I wanted to, uh, you know, be, uh, you know, look perfect, I guess, for the wedding day. So I knew I needed to. So I, just, you know, switched my alcohol around because, again, so before I this, uh, you know, I was a trainer at this point. So I was like, okay, I always believe in that. Whatever, I'm never going to tell you to do something if I'm not going to do it myself, or you know, lead by example, all of those things. So, um, so yeah, so I knew that anything that's too restrictive is you're never going to be able to live with or you know long term so uh going out and being social was a re is a really big part of our life and was a really big part of my life then so i didn't want to say oh well i'm never going to drink any alcohol again because it's not something that i want to do and i say that i want anything that people choose to do if you don't think you can do it forever don't do it. Don't start with doing it because because it's just not, it's you're not gonna, when you start, if you say you never, so if people say they come to like a six week program like what we're running, this transformation program, and if you go, okay, I'm not gonna drink for six weeks. Okay, so that's fine. So you might not drink for six weeks, but then what happens when you start drinking again? So why don't you lose weight at a point, at a time when you're still being able to do the things you enjoy because you'll be able to more likely stick to it longer, it won't be so restricted. When I knew I was getting married, so I looked at 
you know, changing what I, you know, so I think I switched to vodka and soda. Uh, so I, I switched to that. Um, I really made, I knew that I was, um, I was really, uh, I'm, I'm a chocolate person and I had this habit of every day, I didn't drink coffee at the time, but every day women would uh, go, we'd go down to get a break, a break from work and I, and when I would go down to the canteen, I they would get a coffee and I would end up getting a chocolate bar. So that was happening at least once a day. And so then what I looked at doing, so I looked at those types of habits and I was like, how can I change these things around? So I changed those habits around. I knew that sugar was kind of my thing. I looked at how I could eliminate that sugar. I also, at that time, I drank a coffee with two sugar in it. I, so I must have only drunk instant coffee. I didn't drink takeaway coffee. I think I even had sugar in my tea. I cut that out, so I slowly cut that out, as in I went down to one sugar, half, a little bit, you know. Now I can't even imagine drinking sugar, drinking coffee with sugar in it. But, um, but yeah, but that was the thing. And then I looked at, I also, you know, ate a lot of like sweets or, you know, I used to, I remember when I lived in the UK, that I used to be hungry, but now with my knowledge of food, I'm like, oh no wonder you were hungry. But I used to be hungry and I used to eat like a whole bag of jelly lollies on the train on the way home. Yep. Anyway, so that's all things we do. So, uh, so yeah, so I, so I wanted to look, uh, you know, wanted to do whatever to be my wedding dress and all that other stuff. So I, um, I, uh, you know, so I looked at my food in that way. I made sure I was bringing my lunch, you bringing my lunches to work, and I looked at the habits that we had that I had created of in, you know, so I stopped going down to the canteen and buying a chocolate bar, which was happening at least once a day, and um, so I changed those types of habits, and I really cut back on. The, I realized I was at that time I was really a uh, real sugar hungry. So I really cut back. The biggest probably change I made then was cutting back on sugar. So that was fine. So leading to, uh, and you know, I felt great on, you know, and that on my wedding day, and I realized I was quite addicted to sugar. So so that, so I got through all of that, and that was fine. Uh, I then, after we got married, I fell pregnant pretty soon with my son. So I felt pregnant. I probably am more of a control freak than I realized, and I really struggled with, uh, when I first fell pregnant, I struggled with putting on weight and, and not being in control of, of that. And you know, I felt um, I was somebody that wasn't, I wasn't obviously pregnant. So I was probably somebody that I grew wider before I grew out. And I was training and I was training people and I started training this new group of people. And I was training them and this lady, and I said to them, I'm just letting you know, like there was some exercise and I was half, more than half, halfway through, but I still didn't look pregnant, pregnant. I looked just, you know, and I said, oh, I'm pregnant, that's why. And the person said to me, oh, I wonder, I wondered what type of trainer we had here because I didn't look like the, um, you know, the whatever they thought a trainer should look like. So that's fine, that's that person's problem. So uh, so yeah, so I, I had my son. The other thing is just something else that popped into my mind is, you know, everybody has a comment on your body. So during, especially during that period. So when, um, when I was getting towards the end of the pregnancy uh, and I, I, was, I was training people, I trained people all the way up till my son was born and I loved it and I was, I exercised or, uh, and there was one day I did water aerobics and this one day I was doing water aerobics. I think it was born like a week or so later and I was doing it and I could feel his limbs in my tummy moving and I was like, okay, I've had enough now. <laughs> I'll stop working now. And I did. Uh, I stopped working out there. It was just, yeah. I, but that's fine. You get to that point where you realize you've had enough. But so because I wasn't massively big, so like I said, for, for me, while I was pregnant, I grew outwards. You know, so I probably grew outwards first and then sideways, sorry. And then I, you know, then the belly kind of came out. And people were saying, people were then coming up to me and saying to me, oh, you're, you're seven months along. Are you sure you're that far, far along? You're not, are you sure there's not something wrong with the baby? You're not big enough. Or, oh, oh you've only got four weeks to go. You know, and everybody had to comment on, you know, your, your size or what you looked at. And it's like, for God's sake. <laughs> but, you know, by the time... By the time um, 
And I guess with my first baby, I was really conscious of all of those things because I didn't know and I wasn't, I wasn't as confident within myself as what I was by the time I got to my second. By the time I got to my second, I was like, whatever you say is your problem. Like, I just didn't, I just, you know, but with, with my first, I'd be like, oh, it's something wrong or I'm taking in or, you know. Anyway, so that's one. So I had my son, so you'd gained weight. And I was probably really, really naive when I had my first baby, you know, and I didn't know a lot of people that had had babies at the time or, or had close enough friends to have spoken about anything, you know. But I but I remember giving birth and, and then looking down at my stomach and being like, what the hell? <laughs> what? And I remember being like, is, is, is this ruined forever? Like, I just thought that, I was scared that my tummy wasn't going to go back, <laughs> you know, like, because like, you know, it was all, I was like, oh, is this what happens? Like, I just didn't know. My personality is I'm never going to do anything that I can't really stick to forever. So being super restrictive or super hard on myself is not, um, it's just, it's just not going to work. I'm not going to beat myself up about something. I'm going to look at where I'm at and I'm going to give myself, understand that it takes time, you know, so, uh, you know, I, and again, I, I don't know how much I weighed when, when I had my son. I don't know, you know, I can't remember how much I weighed after, uh, you know, I knew that my clothes didn't fit me um, and that they, you know, that, but I, but I also knew that in time, if I did, you know, that, that, that stuff would, would come away. But, but I knew that I needed to obviously look at my food, look at my movement, you know, look at my exercise, you know, but in the same respect, all of those things plus care for my son. So, you know, so from, from that within probably six to nine months, I had got myself back to the size I was, um, probably around about getting married. And then a couple of years later, we, you know, and then my focus was on strength. And when I had my son, I wanted to exercise, but I couldn't, um, I had to work out what I could fit in around him. So I had to work out what exercise, you know, and then I started running because I found running was an easy task that I could do. And I started to really, really enjoy running. I could run with the pram and it meant I was getting out, I was exercising, I still, so I, I and I couldn't, I had to fit, I knew what exercises to do, but I had to fit it in around like what would be possible with, with baby. So that's what I did then, and my pelvic floor was fine to run. And so so that's the kind of, and I just fitted exercise in around and when I can, and I made it work with with him. I knew that it was a priority. I knew I wanted to have a strong core, but I but I had to just make it work around my baby. It was not something I did have back pain. I did have back pain with feeding and you were with a first one baby you were nervous and you know I was like nervous and if he'd fallen asleep and I was in an awkward position I was like that's okay <laughs> I won't move he's asleep you know but I was I was lucky I did have a reasonably good sleeping babies and so so yeah so then after we had Cooper um, and and so that so yeah so that's why I've got back to that size then then life happens you know so i had we had cooper was about two and my husband was really really sick so my husband became really sick and he was undiagnosed for six months so during this period of when he was undiagnosed we were in and out of hospital uh, he was in and out of hospital and um to be honest i was in survival uh, exercise was pretty much non-existent uh exercise was non-existent um and um my food was out, like there was no, you know, I, I went down a path of, you know, when Cooper, you know, having everything, you know, had to have everything clean and perfect and all of that. But, but that also became something that I, I couldn't live. I didn't want, you know, it became overwhelming of my whole life. This was before Lee got sick. So, you know, like you, I wanted to have the most perfect food for my, my, you know, didn't want to give him anything wrong or, um, all of that stuff and I was making everything from scratch and I was prepping food and and it'd get to a point where I would I'd spend all my Sunday prepping food and I'd prep food for the whole week and I remember this one day Lee was like Renee I'm sick of eating heated up food because I would only cook food I'd make everything from scratch everything myself and I'd only cook food that could be like you know I could put it in the freezer and reheat it 
and that took up my whole Sunday and then I ended up grudge, like begrudging it, hating it. So again, I, t I, t I looked at that and saw that experience and thought, okay, how can I, and it's, I've tweaked it and changed it to what I do today. I said, oh, it's always something we're working on. So my husband, my husband was really, really sick. So this became point and it was just survival at this point. We were just trying to survive. He was in and out of hospital. I had a two year old, I had a business to run. Uh, so my stress was really high. To be honest, having uh, LESPT, having my classes is probably what kept me sane during that period because I had to be, um, I had to be strong and uh, strong as in come across happy and perky for everybody else where really I probably did feel like I just want to curl up in a ball and um, feel sorry for myself <laughs> during this time. And uh, it was just one of those things that anything that could go wrong seemed to have go wrong. And then I remember one day saying, nothing else bad can happen. Like like we've, we've had our fair run and, and it, it did. <laughs> so I was like, don't say that, but anyway. So during that period, I was in survival mode. Exercise was, um, you know, exercise was pretty much non-existent uh, or whatever I could fit in when I could, but there was probably very little of it. I can't remember exactly. Uh, you know, it was, there was sleep was lacking. Uh, my food was, so Lee had a surgery and when he had the surgery, I remember having Maltesers for dinner, chocolate sultanas. I just couldn't, I couldn't be bothered. I couldn't be bothered and um and you know obviously now going through that experience now you're like god you feel more crappy when you eat crappy food <laughs> so you know but again it's something else you learn and during that time i was just trying to survive so that was fine my uh we got we got through all of that my husband is uh fine and healthy now and all of that but it was it was a long 18 that was kind of like a long 18 months of him being of him being sick then he had to have surgeries. During this one period, he was in hospital for over 10, 10 in and out, 10 weeks. He'd be in hospital, out of hospital, in hospital. It was like, so anyway, so that's fine. After that, I fell pregnant with Charlie. So I fell pregnant with my daughter, so my second baby. So that's fine. I was more, I knew what to expect because I'd already been through it. Everything else, I, I handled that and I was more confident. As I said before, if um, people made comments, you know, I, I didn't let it bother me like it did upset me properly, you know, about my body shape or my body size, any of those things. So I fell pregnant with my daughter, had my daughter. Then I was really wanted to make sure uh, I really value how my body feels and I knew that I wanted to uh, eat well. I knew that I, uh, I knew that, you know, I'm never going to be restrictive, but I, I wanted to eat. I wanted to be able to breastfeed as long as I could. I only breastfed Cooper for five or so months, but, and I wanted to try to get to a year with my daughter. That was a, just a personal goal that I had, you know, so I did that. So I, st I had a lot of trouble feeding her when uh, my son, no trouble. Charlie, I had trouble feeding her when, uh, you know, and I, I guess I expected it to be the same as him and it wasn't. Um, but I did have trouble, but I got through, I kind of pushed through and I got through that. And then I was like, I want to make sure, I want to feel good within my body. Um, I would like to lose the baby weight. I am never going to be stupid to, you know, and restrictive and all this. And I wanted to make sure that I could still breastfeed and I was going to be giving her enough nutrients. So during, uh, while I was doing all this, I started to, um, this is when I started to truly understand macro counting. So I, I really mastered it here. I'd heard about it before, but I just probably wasn't ready to listen or take it in. I really dived into it and I started to really understand my macros and to make sure that I was eating enough food to support muscle growth, to make sure that I was losing body fat, but I was also being able to produce enough uh, milk supply for my baby. So, uh, so that's where I truly, I really, really dived into that, and I really got uh, got the hang of that, and I was able to do all of those things while still breastfeeding. I breastfed her for a year, and um, that's what I wanted to do, and all of that's fine. My daughter's now five, so. So, so I did all that, and I was able to do that. I was never restrictive. I did it through, and 
with um, you know my daughter, I was even more wiser about your core, and I trained a lot more. You know, between the four years, you know, you know, so I really developed a lot more uh, passion about helping women help them with their core strength and all this. And I made I made it a real priority about my core. So to rebuild my core strength, uh, I made sure I did something every day. And so I tell people all the time, I had to do something every day until um, until I knew I was strong enough. And it took me six, seven, eight months, you know, until I got there. When I first had her, I couldn't even walk down my street. I, you know, had a really quick birth. It was quite crazy or whatever. I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't even walk down the street. I had lots of pelvic floor problems after. I was running was something that I had become to really, really love and I was really desperate to get back to running. And I started running and I wet myself. And I was like, no, no, this is fine. It's just, I just had too much water before I ran. And I, you know, a day later I tried it and the same thing happened. And as a trainer, I knew exactly what that meant. I knew it didn't mean to just keep running and put a pad on. I'll wear a tampon and wet myself. No, I knew it meant I had to go and do the work. So then meant I probably couldn't run for at least another six months. I had went to see a pelvic floor physio. I spent that time working on my pelvic floor. So I, I, and I had to get that strong before I could run again because I knew it would do more damage. Five or six years down the line, I can run with no problems. But you know, if I ignored that problem, it would still give me havoc today. So that's what I'm saying. Yes, it was six months out of my life that I couldn't run or do the things I wanted, but I, it just gives me now the freedom to do everything. So that's what I'm saying, take the time to do this. So um, so yeah, so is that, and, and my core is stronger than ever, stronger than it has been before, but and I did the work. I did the work, I did something every morning and every day. And I'd learned from my son's experience of, like I said, I had back pain. So I had back pain with him. So I then made sure that I was doing, you know, different stretches and those things to help, to help. So I didn't have the same back pain that I did with my son because I've learned from that lesson. And this is what I'm saying. Every, every little bit of experience that we've had along the, that I've had along the way, I'm able to, to help guide you guys. So I can say to somebody, like I get new mums in here and I'm saying, this is what happened with me and my son. Uh, I, had, I had back pain and then when I came to my daughter, I didn't, I, I did this after every time, you know, I did these kind of stretches after every time I fed and, and I didn't have the same back pain. And then people go, oh my God, that's amazing. You know, so learn from my experiences. You know, I've been through these things and if I can teach you these things so you don't have to go through the same thing, then um, that's, that's, my, that's my job done. So I was able to do that after my daughter. So, you know, then, then again, the same thing. My daughter was like two and then, uh, and then COVID. So COVID was a, uh, you know, was a, a uh, you know, there was a lots of unknown around the COVID for me around COVID time, just a couple of weeks before COVID hit my son, my, sorry, my husband broke his, he fell off a ladder and broke his elbow. So uh, not only, uh, so that had happened, then there was the whole unknown of, you know, there was, there was obviously lots of stresses around that time. So it was a really, really stressful time. So probably um, I made a real decision then to, um, I could, I'd been through lots of other stressful times and I'd learned from each, you know, each little time that happens, you take something with it and you learn from it. When I had Charlie, I had other people running the class for me, the classes, and the, running the classes for me is my passion. It's my, it's like I said, it saves me in lots and lots and lots of times. And uh, it's something I'm, you know, I'd spent a lot of time building, building up what it is, you know, what I have. I'd spent a lot of time building it up. And uh, when, when Cooper was eight weeks old, I, so I had, a, I had a job at, I used to work at the hospital. I see the payrolls there and I had a job there. And I, um, when Cooper was eight weeks old, I got made redundant. And uh, it was crap. <laughs> it was really crappy. I got made redundant. And I know I got made redundant because I had a baby. And um, I couldn't prove it because they made four of us redundant at the same time. But it felt really, really shitty. It felt shitty and I felt scared thinking like, you know, I think I was 31 and think, and that was not the first, it was the second time I'd been made redundant. So I was thinking, oh my God, I've got a new baby, you know, but, but it's such a blessing. It was a blessing now. I didn't see that at the time. It was a blessing because it made me do my real passion full time where I probably would have been too scared to take that leap. So, so I'd built it up from, you know, I then 
made a decision, well, I have to either, you know, I think before I had uh, Cooper, I was doing, I had a full time, like a nine to five, but I ran um, four classes a week. So then I was like, okay, I have to make this work around my baby. So then I built Elliot's PT up to what it is today. Then, then I had Charlie. And so when I had Charlie, I just wanted six weeks or eight weeks off to get myself together, to work out my life with two babies and to enjoy being a baby. I knew that I wasn't gonna have any more children after her. So I really wanted to save that every moment, enjoy it with her. And um, during that time, I lost um, half of our members. I, one week I was too scared to look at my phone because, and I just, you know, it's circumstances or whatever, but I was too scared to look at my phone because I was like, so, you know, I just, I just want to enjoy the time my baby and people were leaving. And then I was like, oh my God, what's happening to the thing that I, you know, my, my passion and, you know, I just want some time to, my, you know, I was just very, felt very stressful as well as obviously mum hormones, new baby, working out a new life, all of those things. So, so I have had my fair share of stresses, but anyway, uh, and I've got through them all and I've learned some uh, really good uh, new habits along the way that have uh, kept me sane, kept made me wiser and, um, you know, kept me feeling happy and healthy as well. So anyway, Go, I'm probably jumping back and forth, but hopefully this all makes sense to everybody. I just, I, so then COVID had happened. So there was, uh, there was this fear that it had taken me from, you know, after Charlie had been born, you know, it taken me this two odd years to kind of get back to where I was before I had her, uh, get back to the, the members. And then, you know, it took me all this time to get back to that. And then COVID happens and obviously, you know, I was like, am I going to lose my members, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, so so that was a stress. My husband had broken, had broke his, um, broke his elbow. He, you know, he had, um, you know, he had to have a surgery and whatever else. So that was going on all during that time. And during that period, I, um, we put all our classes online. So we were doing everything virtually during the COVID. And you know what? It was, it was actually great. People lots of the members they said that having the classes to come to you know and having me there being like hello you know like i'm ready for our training you know they said that that kept them sane because i was on there every day to everybody um so so that was that was like that but then during that period uh so previously to that i used to run every day so after my pelvic floor was fixed and all that i would run i'd run before i started my day then I started getting a bit scared about, well, I have to do back-to-back -back classes and because it's on Zoom, they have, to, uh, they have to see me doing it. You know, they don't want to see me just standing there. So I was physically exercising each class. I don't do that now. I don't do every class physically because if I'm doing the class, then I'm not thinking about you, you know. But so I was having to do the class. So then I was like, if I run in the morning and then I have to do maybe three or four hours of classes, I don't know if my body can cope with that. So I stopped the running. I stopped the running and then, you know, whatever, COVID had happened and then, you know, like life got through. And then I found it really hard to get that, to get that habit back. Some other life stresses had, had you know, happened. My exercise had gone a bit out the window and, you know, and then I remember one day looking in the mirror and being like, I've got a full belly. You know, when I had this full belly, and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and life had just got busy and had got in the way. And, and you know, we'd got caught up with things. And, you know, so, so it happens to, you know, it happens to everybody. You're not alone. You know, there's times that you just get busy. And even though you're, I'm a trainer and I'm around this stuff all the time, it, it, happens, it happens to me too, you know, but I, you're able to then go, okay, Let's reassess this. I don't, I am, this is my learning lessons is that I don't, which I always knew, I knew this, but I don't then take this, I don't take that, um, you know, so, so, you know, the day, I was like, oh, gosh, I, you know, like I looked at, I must have been doing an exercise and saw myself in the mirror and it's like, oh, I've got a belly. Like, where did that come from? I don't then go to say, oh, I'm a shit person. 
I'm a loser, nothing ever works. I go, ah, oh, what's going on here? So then you take it back and you look and you go, ah, oh, I used to run every day. I'm not running anymore because I just got out of the habit. You know, oh, I'm not running anymore. What am I? You know, and then you realize, oh, I'm, I'm teaching more classes or I've got more people and, and then, you know, for me, you, sometimes you do that and then by the time you finish doing all this, I wasn't prioritizing exercise for me. You know, and then I was like, oh, I'm not doing this. And you know, my I wasn't thinking about my eating, you know, as much as, you know, so then you have to go, okay, I need to think about these things and I need to, you know, zip it all in and pull it in. So what I'm trying to say to you is that generally being healthy overall is something that we always need to be constantly working on. Nobody is perfect. You are not perfect. I am not perfect. Nobody is going to be perfect. There are going to be life things that are, are going to come at us and they're going to, um, they're going to come at you and you, you might not expect them, but they're going to, you know, they're going to come at you and, and it's how you take them. And, and what I want to teach everybody, and this is what I do through all the programs I run and what we're doing in our trans six week transformational program is to not give up and to understand that sometimes these things happen. But when you understand about your body, you understand how things work. We understand this is the circumstance that we're in at this moment. We don't take it as that you are a loser or it's never going to work. We don't make it mean something about us. We go, this is where I am at life. This is where I'm at. Oh, okay. I've realized this now. What can I do to keep moving forward? What can I do to get me to where I want to be? And, and that's it. Not, not then go, I need to be as restrictive as possible and I need to cut everything out. I need to quit lose 10 kilos when I can. Because because it's not going to work. And, and like I said, whatever, you know, people go, oh, I used to, I did this, I did this and it always worked for me. What got you there? What got you there isn't going to get you here now. What, what, what did then isn't going to work now. You're, you're different now. You're different now and we need to start looking at things as to where you're at now. Not thinking about what you did five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. None of that stuff. It is not going to work now. Okay, because you're not the same person as what you were then. And that's why it's a total body transformation. We want to look at everything and I want to be able to teach these things so then you can start understanding it yourself. So you can understand. I've, I've had journeys where you've been this stress, this stressful time, not stressful time, you know, babies, no babies, partying overseas, coming back. But all among, amongst the whole, the whole thing along the way is I never, I knew that I, I, understood, I never saw myself as a bad person or a loser or anything else. I could wait on when I went overseas and partied. And do you know what? I had the best time ever. And, you know, I put weight on to, uh, you know, life got in the way and you put some extra, you put some extra weight on. Again, that's fine. But when you see health as not a, as, as a, an overall, you know, it's all about how your body feels and having lots of energy and feeling good about yourself, that, that it's something that we not just do for six weeks or not just do for a short period of time. It's a lifetime. And it's something that you've got to constantly, constantly looking at and working at to just to keep yourself you know, like the, um, I can't run as much now because I have, I have, a, I have these things on my feet that hurt me. So I had to reassess what I was doing and change and I'd take some time off from running when I really, really enjoyed running. I had to take some time off from that. And now my running fitness isn't as good as what it used to be, but I can rebuild that back up. But again, I needed to take that time away because, because I was injured. The same thing as with my pelvic floor. I had to give my body that time. And and this is what I'm saying, it's it's not giving up. It's just finding a new a new normal or a new something that's gonna work for you during this time. And that, that is what I'm all about. I'm all about finding this stuff that, that you can find that works for you so that you don't give up. And uh, so I just wanted to let you know that uh, I have been through lots of things myself and it uh, makes me stronger and wiser. And this is, 
you know, I see everything as a lesson and I said to myself, okay, what have I got to learn from here? And then I think, okay, because if you don't learn the lesson, it's going to happen again. And so then I take it, the lesson and, and all of these skills and knowledge we, uh, we put into our programs. So then you don't have to go through uh, or take as long as what I did to learn certain things. You know, you can, uh, you can skip a lot of it and, and move straight on to the next thing. So hopefully that's given you a different insight into me. And uh, you know, if you have any questions or anything, please make sure you do shoot me a message. But our six week transformational program is beginning on the 29th of May. So uh, make sure that you click, there's a link down there if you want more info on the website or send me a message if you want some more info about it. But I will uh, speak to you all again very soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Elliot's PT podcast. I hope you have been able to find this information of use to you. If you know someone who might be, enjoy this podcast, please share it with them and ensure that you subscribe so you can be the first to know when new podcasts are released. If you have the time to leave a five-star review, that would be amazing and it would be greatly appreciated. If you do so, please screenshot and share onto any of our socials and tag us. Then email the screenshot to hello at elliotspt.com and we will send you a free gift to your inbox. Thanks so much. Have an amazing day. Speak soon.